Let us pray. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Am I on? Hello. Okay. A gospel reading from the 22nd chapter of Matthew, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment is is the greatest. He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. So two weeks ago, I started my new part-time position here at St. John. I was really excited to get going, could hardly wait to dive in and learn all of the wonderful things that I was going to learn and begin helping in any way I possibly could. Pastor Lisa and the rest of the staff were so welcoming. In fact, it worked out perfectly. Day one was a staff retreat at Badlands Bible Camp. Great way to get to know one another, learn more about um, things that we're going to be doing here at St. John, and learn more about the staff as people. It's a wonderful day, and the weather was gorgeous. We could actually be outside, so that was nice, too. But day number two, time in the church office, time to get to work. So as I came into the church office that second day, Pastor Lisa came bounding, and I really mean <laughs> bounding, out of her office. She opens the door to what is now my office with an excited flair. She was giddy that I was here, and the welcome honestly filled my heart. We spent time that morning talking about schedules and plans and, and what were some of the things that would, I would be doing. Other staff would come by and uh, give me another welcome as they came by the office. To say I felt blessed in those moments is an understatement. But time to get to work. But first, a hot cup of tea. Time to have a tea. The staff kitchen is just right there outside of the offices, and it has a Keurig. Now, be honest, how many of you have a Keurig or something kind of like it, right? You know how it works. You know how it works. I have a similar machine at home. So I knew what to do. I opened the lid, took out the used K cup, tossed it in the trash, put my cup under there, closed it, and pushed the button. Nothing. Dribble of water in the bottom of my cup. I thought, what the heck? So I looked, and it said I was supposed to dispense six ounces of water. Well, that certainly was not six ounces of water. So I thought, well, open the thing, close it again, push the button. Dribble, dribble, dribble into the bottom of my cup. Okay. The water reserve. Maybe it's empty. So I look at the water reserve, which is rather large. Nope. Half full. 
Well, that seems odd. Maybe it's not seated right down in there good enough. So I remove the water reserve, and water starts draining from the bottom of it all over the counter. And my thought was, oh no, I busted the coffee pot on the first day. I broke the church coffee pot. This is not good. Okay, fill the reserve, clean up the water, seat it back in there really good. Push the button. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Okay, kind of feeling foolish. I step to Pastor Lisa's office and I say to her, do you know how to make this thing dispense water? She says, well, I've only got coffee out of it before. I just put the cup in and push the button and I get my cup of coffee. And I thought, okay, I broke the coffee pot. I was a little sheepish. So I stepped back in there and I thought, okay, Ellie, don't panic. Figure this out. You're a problem solver. So I looked one more time and it said, Press and hold for six ounces of water. Did you hear the problem? Press and hold for six ounces of water. I did that. I stood there, pressing and holding. I got six ounces of water. <laughs> Woohoo! I did not break the coffee pot. I did that two more times because I had a 20 ounce cup, had to fill my cup with hot water, make sure I had all the tea I needed to get started on my task. No mess, no fuss, no problem. I did not, I did not break the coffee maker. The Ten Commandments, they're instructions from God. We have seen or heard them numerous times throughout our lives. But how often do we glance past them? Just like I glanced at the Keurig display, thinking I knew what it said. I didn't. Only when I slowed down and I read the instructions really clearly and I pressed the button and held it, did I get what it was I wanted. Only when we slow down and hold on for a couple of minutes as we read these Ten Commandments do, do we get the desire of our heart and the desire of God's heart. So let's take a look at them. Slow down and hold on a couple of different words through the next Ten Commandments. Number one, you shall have no other gods. We're going to slow down right there on number one. Hold on for a second. You may think, of course, there is only one God. I know this. I live this. But I challenge you to consider whether you put other things up there with God. Maybe money or status. Likes on social media. Your phone. Do you spend more time with your phone than you do the Lord? Other possessions, are they more or as valuable to you as God? Luther's small catechism says this commandment means that we should fear, love, and trust God above all things. Above is our whole word right there. Nothing should be more important. Above all things should be God. Number two, you shall not misuse the name the Lord our God. There are 171,146 words in the Oxford Dictionary. Pick a different one. Don't misuse the precious name of our Lord. Use the Lord's name. Call upon the Lord in your times of trouble. While you're praying. While you're praising and giving thanks. The Lord's name is not the time for you to, or the word for you to use to express frustration, pain, or anger. To fit in or because it's a habit. Commandment number three. Remember to keep the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. 
Let's slow down just for a second there and hold on the word holy. Holy is loving God enough to keep God's word sacred. Gladly hearing it and learning it. Loving God enough to keep God's word sacred. Gladly hearing it and learning it. That's how we keep it holy. Commandment number four, honor your father and mother. Honor doesn't mean agree. It doesn't have to mean agree. Honor is different. Honor means serve, obey, love, and cherish them. Ask nearly anyone who has lost their father or mother, and they will tell you the value of this commandment. Commandment number five, you shall not murder. That one seems like, check, I got that one. I know that. No murder here. Might seem super easy, but Martin Luther says that what that truly means is we should not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. In every physical need. Shovel their snow. Give them a ride. Pull up or down their dumpster. Bring them something to eat. And I'm not talking about your neighbor that lives right next door to you. Your neighbor in terms of the global universe. Do these things for each other. Don't fall into the do not murder category. Commandment number six. You shall not commit adultery. This means leading a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do. Say and do are our hold on, take a closer look words. This involves the music we listen to, the jokes we tell, the video games we play, the movies and shows that we watch, and all of our social media activity. Commandment number seven, you shall not steal. Don't take money or possessions from your neighbor. That means anyone. Commandment number eight, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Simply put, don't lie. Don't gossip. Commandment number nine, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. Covet is our slow down word here. Hold on a second. Covet. Covet implies having a strong or envious desire, wanting something that is not ours. Coveting is not actually taking it. That's covered in the do not steal commandment. Covet is wanting, deeply wanting something that's not ours. And that's property of someone else. Commandment number 10, do not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So let's relate 9 and 10 together a little bit. Commandment number 9 identifies not having a desire for any of your neighbor's property or things. Number 10 is an envious desire for their relationships, their people. Obedience to these commandments brings us freedom, personal growth, Protection from dangers and blessings in abundance. When things in your life aren't going as you'd like, you can look around for someone or something else to blame, like I did with the Keurig. Has to be the water thing. Has to be some other mechanical part. But the reality of the problem with the coffee maker and with life, most often, is user error. I wasn't following the instructions. Slow down and read. And reread. Reread these ultimate instructions given by God to show us how to live an abundantly blessed life and to bestow those blessings on other people. Read them over and over until you really grasp what God has instructed and then do your very best to live them. But none of us are going to follow them perfectly. That was a tall order I just read in those Ten Commandments. None of us are going to live them perfectly. 
Thankfully, our one and only God is a God of grace and forgiveness. And when we don't live them perfectly, we get another opportunity to try again. Slow down. Hold on those words repeatedly. And you will watch your cup overflow. Amen. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you may as we share the peace in the room and on Facebook Live, the peace of Christ be with you always. may be seated and we continue with the offering something we do most of the time when we worship the offering is not only the things you put in the plate but it is the way that you offer a welcome in worship it is the music that you sing thank you to Kevin and Cheryl and Kayla and Percy for sharing your gifts uh, an offering is a sermon there are many ways that you offer back the gifts that God has first given to you
Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll serve communion by intinction, so we'll have two stations out in front of the communion rails, and you can come up the center aisle, receive the sacrament, and go back to your seat up the side aisle. Remember, on Wednesdays during Lent, we have been souring the wine with some pretty strong vinegar. So remember, when you dip your bread into the wine, it will not taste great because we've soured the wine on Wednesdays. So you can taste the sweetness of the resurrection on Sundays because every Sunday is an Easter day. If you are worshiping online and you're with someone, I encourage you to share the bread and the wine now. If you happen to be by yourself, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come to this meal of mercy. Come as you are.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you may as we sing the final blessing. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.